Unit three, politics. Just getting started here in unit three, your objective today, I can defend or criticize the media. We're warming up, getting the groundwork laid so that we can dive into deeper political issues and also the 2024 election. We began by discussing the candidates and their political platforms. Now let's talk about the other key player in the election of 2024 and politics in general, the media, the news, TV, social media, information sources. Are they doing their jobs? Are they informing the public? Are they working for the public interest? No, they're not. The public is not very well informed about politics in general. The voting public is not very well informed on all the issues. Let's begin. So the media has been telling us this race has been close. That is not the case. That is not true. Never has been true. And now the veil has been lifted. The curtain has been pulled back. And when people are realizing, and you look at the betting markets, this thing isn't close. That's nearly a 20% gap at poly market. If it were close, how could this be so? Why is the media telling us otherwise? Well, let's just run through the election cycle and follow the information and the changes in the betting trends. So you go back to earlier this year, Trump is pulling away from Biden, mainly because of the inflation in the economy. The gap even further widens when Biden has his disastrous debate. It's even bigger when the assassination attempt in Butler, Pennsylvania on July 13th. The gap closes when the media starts to hype Kamala Harris after she has been selected as the new Democratic presidential candidate. She does pretty well in the second debate and also... Her fundraising numbers are incredible, and so she starts to increase. Now, at this point, you could say, all right, well, maybe the media did think it was close. But they knew about the hype. They knew about a post-convention hype. They're not that foolish. And so it stays pretty close for quite a while. Then we have the vice presidential debate, which favors Vance and Trump. And there starts to be a little bit of a difference. The hurricane response from FEMA definitely does not help out the Biden-Harris administration. But last is the internal data. We'll talk about the internal data. That's going to be the real story. But clearly we can see it's not close. Trump is finally pulling away in these numbers in the betting markets. The truth was she never really had a shot. We know Biden was sliding. A lot of her increase was just the Harris hype. So you look at these polls, and the first thing that you have to realize is that when you look at a national poll, it's totally worthless. There is no point to this poll whatsoever. Harris is winning. Trump is losing. Well, first of all, polling data is pretty bad. And you can watch previous videos where I discuss all of the flaws with polling data, how polls are conducted, the funding of polls. You can't trust them. But even worse than that, even if you could trust a national poll, there's no reason in trusting a national poll. There's no reason in looking at a national poll. There's no reason in considering a national poll because we don't vote nationally. It's not a popular vote that elects the president. A national poll represents a popular vote. She can win all of California and all of New York and all of the major metro areas where there are a lot of people. But that's not how our elections work. We have an electoral college. It is a state-by-state -state election process. Each state is awarded a significant or a certain amount of points. And if you get over 270 points by winning different states, you become president. So a national poll, worthless. All polls worthless, but at the very least, state polls mean a little bit more. And so what really, if the news were informing you, they would look at state polls, specifically 
in the states that could go either way, the swing states on your screen. That is all they should ever talk about. Not national polls, but they talk about national polls. Why are they doing this? Well, because the data look better from the national perspective. Also, you're broadcasting across the nation. You want more national coverage. There's the idea that if I'm only showing specific states, maybe I'll lose viewers in other states. And that really is the situation we're talking about. Viewers. We'll get to that in a second. But let's kind of talk about some of the process of the events that unfolded and why things are as bad as they are and never were that good. So they had to find a replacement for Joe Biden. Who could it be? Do they bring in someone new, fresh face, a actual change agent because America wants change and they had the opportunity to bring in someone that would represent change. Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan, both had political capital or support and people see them as rising stars in the Democratic Party. Neither are perfect, but they had political abilities. Michelle Obama's name was tossed around, but she wanted nothing to do with it. And Hillary Clinton's always lurking in the background. So they really had an opportunity here. Or they could go with Vice President Kamala Harris, who was generally disliked by everyone. And no one really wanted to take that position. No one wanted Kamala. Well, it ends up being Kamala. Why? Seems strange, doesn't it? When the clear option was go with the change, well, it's about money. If Harris were to run for president and replace Biden, she got to keep all the money they had raised up until that point, which was a lot of money. If you bring in Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmer, anyone else, you, by law, cannot use those campaign funds. So put yourself in Gavin or Gretchen or any other possible new change agent's position. Yeah, you can run for president, but we won't have any money to support you, which means you're probably going to lose. And if you lose this election in 2024, we're probably not going to invite you back to run in 2028 when you'll have a better chance. So, A, you can take the candidate has a bunch of money. B, you can forfeit all the money. And then you got to put yourself in the shoes of Gretchen and Gavin. They say, nah, I'm going to wait till I have a real shot. So they weren't really that bullish on running for president. So for all intents and purposes, they were stuck with Kamala. Now, we'll give you some hope. If you are really into politics and really support one party, specifically the Democratic Party, like, oh, I don't like this, this is biased. There's hope, you know. Politics is more than just ideology and views and arguing and debate. If you really look at a lot of politics lately, it's, there's a lot of blue collar work that goes on in these political parties. They are literally dragging people to the polls. It's about getting people to show up. And to get people to show up, you got to get people to get people to show up. And that often isn't just voluntary. You can't just rely on grassroots freebies or people volunteering. You got to hire people, pay people, get your workers out there, knock on doors. I believe last that I heard for the Republican Party and their interest groups to get a voter to make sure that they vote. There are 16 points of contact. I mean, you're showing up at the door five times. You're texting them five times. You're calling them five times. And then you're probably going to the door again and saying, are you going to vote? Come here. This is where you need to go. There is a lot of what's going on with these action, politically active action committees, etc. Now, if you've got enough money, you can hire enough people to literally drag people to vote. You can drive them to vote. And when you got $1 billion like the Democratic Party has, give them a car. Here's your car. Go drive to vote. Wouldn't it put it past them? So although I say it's over, $1 billion is a lot of money. 
And elections can be bought. I'm not saying that it's rigged. I'm saying that you can use money to increase your chances of winning. We're not just talking anymore about buying TV ads. We're talking about hiring people to go produce votes. And one billion can get that done. Probably won't, though. So back to the media, feeding us the story of it's close, it's close. And not informing the public. And voters being, A, misled by what's going on, and B, just not really knowing the issues. Why aren't they doing their job? Well, they are. This is their job. You're foolish to believe that the media's sole purpose is to inform the public, serve the public's interest. Those days are gone. MSNBC and your 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 24 hours of their programming, guess what? It, it's a corporation. It's a business. It's a firm. And firms have to make money. And so they need you to tune in and watch the commercials. Why are you putting on MSNBC and sitting through the commercials? They have to answer that why. They have to create content that gets you to turn it on so they can make money. It's not about informing the public anymore. It is a naive perspective of the media. They got to make money. They got to make content that sells. The game is close. You're tuning in. That's why they show national polls. That's why they show this poll. That's why they mislead the public. You turn on a close game. You do not turn the game on. If it's a blowout, you change the channel. They need this thing to be close. They need you to see it as close. And then when you're there watching because it's close, rather than inform you about political platforms and what they actually believe and what they actually do and not just conversations about character or superficial things about each candidate or the latest silly thing they did or did not say and how it can be twisted and spun. What they do is scare you, outrage you, fire you up, and they report on the crazy stuff, the manipulated stuff. They don't just give you the facts. They don't give you the basics. That's boring. You're changing the channel. They don't tell you that the race is not close. It's a blowout because you change a the channel. They can find numbers that support their ideas. And they can find outrageous things to spew onto your screen to keep you locked in, keep you entertained, not informed. Entertainment gets eyeballs. Information, you change the channel, you change the station. They got to make money and they're making money off you. So they are doing their job. It's just the place that we live in. And so going further with that, we are not totally innocent in this situation either. The media isn't entirely to blame, although they're not doing their job the way we would like it. They do what they got to do. And we're not helping out by living the bubble life, living in silos, information silos. Democrats tend to watch MSNBC and only absorb Democrat-leaning information. And so they only get the message from one side. And they also tend to associate only with friends and family that are on that one side. And so they never hear anything else. And Republicans do the exact same with Fox News and their friends and family. And so be in, in the end, we are not well-informed voters. We do not have a broad, well-rounded understanding of politics in general, of how things work, or of the 2024 election. The media is not helping. We're not helping ourselves. Neither of each party really understands all the angles of current events, all the ins and outs, the trade-offs of every issue, 
the costs, the benefits. Just some examples of the screen of things that Republicans and Democrats probably have completely different views on. That's why I would suggest twoway.tv. If you want to really get a well-rounded understanding of politics, you want to get a really well understanding of the election, you want to become better at civil discourse and watch real citizens and real journalists have productive conversations, accepting tolerant conversations, check out two-way. So here we go. Let's go back to the internal data where, all right, people really started to find out what was going on. The American public is kind of informed now and is starting to see. They put on the uh, put on some, a pair of glasses and now all of a sudden they can see everything. I'm reminded of the movie They Live, but none of you will get that reference. But if you've ever seen They Live with Roddy Piper, this is that moment. Put on the shades. Here we go, internal data. The Democratic Party knew this all along. But they couldn't keep it secret all along. Sources were slipping this information to various sites, and now it's out. Now people can truly see what's going on. The big shift, the big change, the internal data. So what did the internal data say? Well, what is the deal with internal data? Again, the Democratic Party, well, actually, we'll get to that second. So the Democratic Party, big, well-organized, well-oiled machine. This isn't their first rodeo for the donkeys. They know how elections work. They've done this before. They've won a couple in the last 20 years. So you have private election data, and you have the various polls throughout the nation. A lot of them run by small organizations, universities, and such. We don't have access to that private election data until it gets leaked, which has been leaked recently. We get the public election data, and there's a big difference between these two types of data that tell us about the election. Now remember, Amos Teens got $1 million from fundraising. So a lot of Girl Scout cookies to get that billion dollars. Great fundraising job by the Democrats. So if you got a billion dollars in your well-oiled machine and you don't got a billion dollars, which is Quinnipiac, who's trying to survey and collect data on the election, which of these two do you think is going to have more accurate data, more thorough data, the best data possible? Obviously, the Democratic Party has really strong knowledge of the election because they've got a bunch of money. And so when they do research, it's real research. It's real data. They know exactly what's going on. They know exactly if they're winning or losing. They can track all kinds of numbers that Quinnipiac cannot. They can conduct all kinds of research that Quinnipiac cannot afford to do. It might surprise you, but polling is very expensive. Collecting this data and getting it accurate is not cheap. And the more money you have, the better tools you have, the better resources you have, the more workers you have, etc. Long story short, the Democratic data was, is so much better than the polling data. The public gets the Quinnipiac public polling. You get the, hey, she's winning nationally 49 to 44. They have the real numbers. They know what's going on in every state. They know what's going on in every county. They know what's going on in every little small town and village. They know who's registered. They know how many times they've called a person. They know how likely that person they called is going to vote. They got all of it. Quinnipiac just called up grandma on her landline because she's the only one that still picks up her phone, and that's their data. Not good data. So what did this internal data say? Well, first of all, it said it wasn't close. They knew it. They've known it all along. And you probably could have seen it if you were digging deep and doing your own research, not relying on the media to tell you what was happening. But the internal data they had, you can see, and some of it's now finally being released. 
Democrats see 103% increase in Pennsylvania voters leaving the party. They knew people were saying, I'm no longer a Democrat. They knew that they were signing up to be Republicans. Arizona Democrats are switching parties. They had that data. Black men are rapidly abandoning the Democratic Party. They had that data. Democrats lose ground with blacks and Hispanics. They had that data. You can look and see the actual changes county by county. Who registered as a Republican? Who registered as a Democrat? You can see these numbers if you are in the internal data or if you're doing some really deep research and are a political nerd. But the public wasn't getting that data. They were getting the Quinnipiac poll. They were getting NBC because they need to sell you something. It's close. It's a close game. It's a close game. It was not a close game. The internal data suggested otherwise. And the real reason is it comes down to the whole never Trump thing. A lot of this boils down to I hate Trump, never Trump, 2016, 2020. He's everywhere. People despise the guy. He's a bad dude. He's a bad dude. Well, guess what? People just got used to it. People don't care anymore. People aren't as angry anymore. There are bigger issues. There are a lot bigger issues in the country now, and people have just gotten used to it. Like, what do you mean? No, no, they hated him. They're still going to hate him. No, voters have pretty much decided, at least those people in the middle, and many new voters, ah, whatever, you know, he's not perfect, but they've just gotten used to tolerating him. And you don't need to change the whole nation. Sure, there's probably 40% of Democrats still hate the guy, they're still scared of the guy, and still don't like the guy. But that 10% in between, Republicans and Democrats, and that's all it really needs to change, it's like, ah, whatever. You know, they used to be scared. People wouldn't talk about Trump. People were afraid to admit they voted for Trump. People wouldn't bring it up. They didn't want to lose friends and family. They didn't want to lose their jobs. They didn't want to lose any privileges that they had. People were very secretive about it to the point that they didn't even support him or they wouldn't tell people that they supported him. That's not the case anymore. People are no longer afraid to voice their support of Trump's Republican Party. Not everyone, but if you just open your eyes, put those glasses on and look around, you see, yeah, there's a lot more people out here talking about him and not afraid to bring him up anymore. And again, it doesn't take the whole country to change. 40% of Democrats probably still would hate you if you talk about him. But that 10% that swings the vote one way or the other, most of them are like, I don't care, whatever. It's socially acceptable now. It's not such a shameful thing people do not give each other as much of a hard time for supporting trump and so now we've got voters who are willing to change and willing to express their views and this is not a new phenomenon we've had plenty of presidents with character flaws citizens get over it they just do and Trump's been around for long enough now that many people are just getting over it. Abe Lincoln, Manic Depression, USS Grant, US Grant, alcoholic, Kennedy family, affairs, drug addiction, LBJ bully, scandals in his uh, early days in Texas, Clinton scandals, affairs, Bush, alcoholic, people dismissed him as unintelligent. And then you got Trump affairs, it says offensive things. All of those presidents, no one really says anything bad about it anymore. People just got willing to accept it. Clinton had his issues in office. Now no one has a problem with him. Bush had his problems in office. The economy crashed. Failed wars. People are generally nice to him anymore. And what you have seen with Trump is the same thing. People may not like him. People may not like Bush. They may not like Clinton, but they're just done hating these guys. They've warmed up. They've got other things to think about, other things to use their emotions on than hating a president. And when people warm up, they'll just throw that vote in. 
the voters no longer never Trump. They're just like, meh, all right, whatever. So we go to the internal data. Voters have changed. You got Kamala running. The initial plan was to have her just don't say anything. Let's just go out there. Let's hope that people still hate Trump and let's win this election. Well, the reality was the hate, the never Trump thing had just kind of died. And so the initial plan of just go out there, we'll rely on Trump hate, you get elected. Stay quiet, don't make any mistakes. Well, the never Trump thing wasn't working. Her numbers were falling. We had seen the change in registration from Democrats to Republicans. The Democrat Party panics, as they should. Their initial plan, they got to change it. All right, you got to go do interviews. We're losing. They would have never made her do interviews if they were winning. They would have never made her do interviews if it was really Kamala 49% and Trump 44% in the national polls. The national polls are garbage. The internal data said, we are losing. We've got to change course. We can't keep you quiet. You can't hide anymore. You got to go out there and do some interviews. And she did, and it got worse. And that's what they feared. And that's why originally they didn't want her out there talking that much. They didn't want Tim Waltz out there talking that much. They thought that they didn't have much to gain and they only had things to lose. They were going to rely on never Trump, never Trump. That wasn't working. Did they change plans, take the risky approach of, all right, you got to go out there and do interviews. And it's been a disaster ever since. And it's getting worse. And the public is becoming more and more likely to vote for Trump. They may not like Trump, but from what they have seen now, specifically that 10% in the middle, those voters that are undecided, as they see more of these poor interviews, and as their hatred for Trump starts to cool off, they're more likely to throw that vote in for the GOP. Democrats knew this. Republicans have known this. The public does not know this. Because the public is given this. Because they want you to think it's close. And, hey, to defend the media, they are a business. They've got to make money. They can't tell you what's a blowout. If they told you what's a blowout today, you're done watching their station, and you're watching college football, you're watching Dancing with the Stars, you're throwing on YouTube. They got to keep your eyes glued. Let's talk a little bit more about the Never Trump thing and how if you really were paying attention, you saw all this coming. You didn't necessarily need the Democratic internal data. You didn't need the leaks of information. You just had to be watching the country, paying attention to what was going on and not listening to the media tell you it's close, it's close. So one of the obvious things, if you go back to 2016, 2020, maybe 2020, Trump was toxic. No one wanted to be associated with Trump. He wasn't invited at any shows. I mean, they prosecuted the guy in court several times, charged him with felonies. He wasn't doing talk shows. He wasn't hanging out with celebrities. He wasn't welcome in the public. His supporters weren't either. You had January 6th, but you fast forward to 2024. He's not toxic anymore. He's everywhere. And people that you never thought would support him are supporting him. People that you never thought were talking about him say, hey, we're talking about him. Not just on TV, but in your neighborhoods. The the sentiment had changed. The view had changed. The environment had changed. He was no longer toxic. The never Trump, I hate this guy, throw him in jail, kind of existed in parts, but a lot of places that had cooled down. And there were a lot of clues. A lot of people came out and said, I'm supporting him, that we never thought would support him, that we're never Trumpers. Elon Musk, a never Trumper to an extent, Democrat lifetime switches, RFK, the Kennedys are the epitome of the Democratic Party, joins with Trump, 
Tulsi Gabbard, who had plenty of horrible things to say about him when she was a Democrat, joins with him. Vivek, Vivek joins with him. J.D. Vance, who once said disparaging things about Trump, is vice president. The All In Podcast, you may not listen to it. That's the most popular podcast in the country. Chamath, lifelong Democrat, never Trumper, supports Trump. Friedberg, likely to vote for Trump even though he's a liberal. Bill Ackman, lifelong Democrat, big time on the stock market, supports Trump. Danica, Sage Steele, I'm not sure this guy's name, but it's Shazam. Uh, I think maybe Jonathan's his first name. No, Zach, whatever. An actual celebrity in movies supporting Trump. If you had your glasses on and weren't watching the media, you could see like, huh, I think something's changing here. Silicon Valley has quietly moved from the left to the right. A lot of the tech industry, which is very liberal and very progressive, has shifted a lot of its support towards the conservative Snoop Dogg, who had an F Donald Trump song, supports Trump. Trump's on the Full Sin podcast. He's on other podcasts. In 2020, 2021, 2022, it's unthinkable. Jan 6, guy's a criminal. He's a felon. Lock him up. Now he's on every podcast you can talk about. He's on every show. He's making media appearances. He's in the public. There's thousands, hundreds of thousands of people around. And then maybe one of the bigger last straws is Saturday Night Live, which is actually funny again in times, is making fun of the Democrats. Over the last eight years, any SNL skit was always pretty favorable of the Democrats, and they weren't funny. Now they are actually going after Kamala. They're going after Joe Biden and Tim Waltz. They are making fun of them and exaggerating the, the, the mistakes that they make and are humiliating them. It's funny, and it's true, and they're doing that. They would have never done that before. The environment has changed. The cinema has changed. The country has changed. The culture has changed. Trump's no longer toxic. And the Democrats are no longer untouchable. Sports. Why isn't LeBron James talking about Kamala Harris? October 9th. Where is he? Where are all the athletes in the past that have been very active and outspoken about voting and voting for the Democrat Party and supporting Obama and Biden? You remember in the past how outspoken they were. You remember them sharing their political views, football, NBA, you name it. Where are they in 2024? If you're paying attention, if you're not just ingesting what the news media is giving you, then you could have read the tea leaves. You could see what's really truly going on in this nation, and you could have made a pretty good prediction on what was going to happen. That's what we are seeing in the betting market. People are now finally seeing the light or seeing what is going on, finding the truth, despite the media's attempt to mislead you. And they're going to continue to push the never Trump information into their silo. And it will be fine with them because they don't need 100% of the nation to watch the channel. They only need the Democrats to watch their channel. And so the Democrats will keep tuning in if they can keep telling them it's close and never Trump, never Trump, never Trump. It's not going to change anything. But the truth is, most people aren't on this never Trump thing. It's all changed if you just look around. Now, you're not going to see that if you're in your silo. You're not going to see that if you don't have your glasses on. And they don't have their glasses on. They're not changing the channel. Nothing's going to change for those viewers. And we could say the same for Republicans as well. Let's not make this a con condemnation of the Democrats and an attack on Democrats. This is more of a condemnation 
an attack on the media for misleading, and then also for most of us for not being aware, not paying attention, not doing our own research, staying in our silos. It's a lot of blame to go around for being uninformed. Not a good job by the informers, and not a good job by those whom need to be informed. We can all do better. And how do you do better? Do your own research. Trust your eyes, trust what you see. Pay attention to your day-to-day -day surroundings. Find websites that you can trust, like twoway.tv. Find good sources of information if you so feel inclined. But in the end, no one's gonna fix it for you. No one's going to save you. You have to save yourself. Do your own research. Don't listen to me. Don't believe me. Look it up. If you question anything that I've said here, look it up. Check out the various sources. Double check my information. Triangulate the information. Do your own research. There's a link to the video if you want to watch it. So again, defend the media. They're trying to make money. Criticize the media. You're supposed to be informing us. It shouldn't always be about money. It's always about money.